Hi everybody, monetary policy involves changes to interest rates, the money supply and the exchange rate by the central bank of an economy in order to influence aggregate demand. So very much like fiscal policy, a demand side policy. Policies aimed to influence aggregate demand, but unlike fiscal policy, these policies will be enacted by a country's central bank independent to the government. And the mandate for these central banks around the world will predominantly be to control inflation. In the UK, the Bank of England's primary role is to hit a 2% inflation target. So something to bear in mind. Monetary policy can be both expansionary or contractionary. Expansionary monetary policy are any of these policies that try to boost aggregate demand, whereas contractionary monetary policies are any of these policies above that aim to reduce aggregate demand. Let's see why a central bank would use either expansionary or contractionary monetary policy. While the primary goal of central banks out there is to hit the inflation target, so a major reason for using expansionary monetary policy would be to boost aggregate demand and to raise demand pull inflation if the inflation rate is below target. But inflation targeting is not the only goal of central banks around the world. Absolutely not. Also within their mandate will be macroeconomic stability. And part of that is also achieving the other macroeconomic objectives as well as hitting the inflation target. So for that reason, expansionary monetary policy could also be to try and boost economic growth and reduce unemployment. We get both when aggregate demand increases. What about contractionary monetary policy? Why would central banks look to use that? Well, the primary reason why central banks would use contractionary monetary policy and want to reduce AD is again to hit the inflation target. So if inflation is beyond target and it needs to come back down towards target, a reduction in AD can reduce demand for inflation and bring it towards the target rate. But as I've said already, macroeconomic stability will be another major goal of central banks around the world, not just inflation targeting. And that also involves protecting the financial sector, guarding against financial sector collapse. Number two and number three linked to that. I'm not going to explain them in detail in this video. Two videos on in this playlist, you'll see a video about contraction and monetary policy. And I'll go into these in far more detail. But number two is basically saying to prevent excessive growth of house prices and to prevent excessive credit in the economy. That is borrowing by households and by businesses. And the problem is that if too much of this is going on, too much house price growth, which is unsustainable, too much credit and borrowing, which is unsustainable, there is a risk to the financial sector. There is a risk of a crash there and a potential recession in the economy. Number three is the idea of balancing out economic growth, reducing excess debt and promoting more saving. So if economic growth in an economy is very debt fueled, uh, whether it's consumer spending or investment, then higher interest rates, for example, can reduce the incentive to take out so much debt and thus more sustainable growth is promoted in the country, but also to promote saving. So savings are very low and that's dangerous for households and businesses. Higher interest rates provide an incentive to save, which is important too. But also contractionary monetary policy via reducing AD can also help in reducing a current account deficit. Very much a theoretical reason here. And that's because as AD falls, growth falls, incomes fall, and therefore there'll be less spending on imports, which in theory will narrow a current account deficit. From now on in, guys, I'm going to focus on expansionary monetary policy, because as I've said, I've made a separate video in this playlist about contractionary monetary policy. So let's focus now on the different types of expansionary monetary policy. Well, interest rates are the big daddy of monetary policy. So even though we can talk about expansionary monetary policy being boosts to the money supply, that's quantitative easing, or reductions in the exchange rate, we're not going to go into those in this video. I've covered QE in a separate video. You can look at that. But interest rates are very much the big daddy of expansionary monetary policy. So that's what we're going to focus on here. Now, expansionary monetary policy, interest rate cuts, will feed through a transmission mechanism before hitting the real economy. And basically, that means that an interest rate cut by the central bank will work through various channels, affecting a variety of variables in the AD equation as it hits the real economy. So don't think that an interest rate is just one rate. There are so many different interest rates out there in the economy. And a cut in the central bank interest rate will affect a wide variety of interest rates in the economy. And as that central bank rate cut feeds through these different channels and hits the real economy, we say the cut is working through the monetary policy transmission mechanism. And here's what it is. So the central bank would cut interest rates. That's the expansionary policy being used. And that could well lead to lower credit card interest rates, basically lower borrowing costs for consumers. 
And if that's the case, it makes it cheaper for consumers to borrow, it incentivizes more borrowing, it incentivizes less saving. That's going to increase the marginal propensity to consume as consumers borrow. They're going to be spending more on big ticket items like cars, like furniture, like jewelry, as some as simple examples. And therefore, aggregate demand will boost as consumption rises. At the same time, saving interest rates will fall. Interest rates is the uh, cost of borrowing, yes, but it's also the rate of return on saving. So if the central bank cuts their interest rate, uh, interest rates on savings accounts could fall in the economy as well. And with that, that reduces the incentive to save, it increases the incentive to spend instead, and therefore will increase consumption in the economy and boost AV that way. As central banks cut their interest rate, we can expect that mortgage rates, mortgage interest rates across the economy will come down as well. Mortgages, just a loan that individuals take out when they're looking to buy a house. And for households or families that have tracker rate mortgages or variable rate mortgages, these mortgages have interest rates that will follow the central bank rate. So if the central bank rate is cut, then tracker mortgage rates and variable rate mortgages will come down as well. And that means that households will be paying less monthly towards their mortgage payments. And that means they're going to have more disposable income. That's going to increase their marginal propensity to consume and thus boost consumption. We can also link to lower interest rates on business loans. These are very different loans and have different interest rates as well. And if those interest rates come down, it increases uh, the incentive for businesses to borrow because the cost of borrowing for businesses reduces. If businesses borrow, they could well use that money for investment purposes and boosting AD that way. Also, lower interest rates across the economy can well weaken the exchange rate. And that's because savers have less of an incentive to save in this country if interest rates are lower. And therefore, they'll look to move their money out of the country. That's known as hot money outflows for an economy. Hot money is savings that chase the best interest rate. So if interest rates are relatively lower in one economy and they're higher elsewhere, uh, people with savings will move their money out of the country, hot money outflows, that will lead to an increase in the supply of a currency, depreciating the currency. And with a weak currency, we get a boost to net exports in the AD equation. And here is the impact on a diagram. So if these channels actually work and we see the lower interest rates feed through into these uh, higher variables in the AD equation, then there's our AD shift to the right. There we can see the increase in growth and reduction in unemployment. And there we can see the increase in demand for inflation as well, which might be desirable if inflation is below the target rate. But crucially, there is also a link between expansionary monetary policy and long run aggregate supply. Now, remember what I said, monetary policy is a demand side policy. So any link to LRAS will just be a nice side effect. It's not going to be the core um, ideal of what monetary policy is trying to do, the core intention. But there could well be this boost and that comes via an increase in investment. So if interest rates on business loans do come down and businesses do borrow more and invest, then as we know, investment can boost LRAS via an increase in the quantity of capital, an increase in the quality of capital, and an improvement in the productive efficiency of the economy. That's what investment does. And so we see the improvements in long-term growth rates, as well as short-term growth rates via the increase in AD. But as I said, this is very much a nice side effect. It's not the core intention. It's a demand side policy. This is the core intention of expansionary monetary policy. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you for the next video, very important video, as we look to evaluate expansionary monetary policy. Thank mm -hmm. you.